can you start by thanking uh, IBA for the for this invitation for me to tell you more about what we are doing in our institute, and I will tell you more about DNA. Um, I'm pretty sure uh, most of you can understand um, what DNA is. Every one of us we have our unique DNA. Um, so thank you, IBA, very much. I'm pretty sure all of you have experienced this. So I still remember when I was uh, working on my PhD, when I was writing out my thesis results in the, and, and trying to compile all the data into a thesis. I was working on an iMac in the year 2000, right? Um, and if you look at the specifications of iMac and, and, and realize what happened 10 years later, right? as you can see, just fill your pockets. How many of you will have a mobile device, a smartphone? So literally, within a short time frame of 10 years, we compress the iMac into an iPhone and we have it in our own pocket. So this is a transformation, this is a revolution by itself, and, and we all experience this largely because of this uh, observation of Moore's law, which describes the ability to condense um, transistor into highly compact space, and, and that doubles every two years. Um, what does that have to go, to do with life science? So it's always a desire for humans as a mankind to sequence our own DNA, right? That desire was um, uh, started, uh, that, that, that whole concept was started many years ago. And in fact, the, this project, which is called the Human Genome Project, was started in the year 1990. Um, it's, a, it's a very challenging project. It requires multiple countries to put their effort together. It was very costly. It cost many countries more than 100 million US dollars to sequence the first draft of the human genome. Not only was it costly, it also took a very long time. Guess how many years it took? It took more than 10 years to sequence the entire human DNA, and that requires multiple effort, and that was really costly. But in the year 2000, that marks the beginning of the human genomics age. And from, from the beginning of the human project until now, what, what, has, what has happened? What, what, um, I, I want to tell you about um, the revolution that is ongoing right now. As you can see in this chart, this chart plotted the cost of sequencing one human genome across the year. As I mentioned earlier, it cost more than $100 million in the year um, uh, 1990 onwards. And as you can see over here in this chart, the cost of sequencing is dramatically reduced. In fact, the cost of sequencing outpaced Moore's law, as highlighted in the purple graph. There are two dip that you would see in this graph. The first dip occurs in the year 2007 with the introducing of a next generation sequencing device. And the second dip in the sequencing course occurs right in front of our own eyes, which, which uh, happens when the, one of the premium sequencing company, Illumina, announced a next, next generation of sequencing machines. And to illustrate to you um, the, the, the revolution that is ongoing right now, I'll pose this question. If um, with this technology, which is available in a, in a laboratory, uh, in a research setting, how many genomes can be sequenced within a week? How many of your genome can be sequenced on this particular machine? In a, in a way to illustrate the revolution that is ongoing right now, um, we have to ask these questions um, in the context of different years. For example, if we ask these questions in the year 2012, the answer is two genomes. Two human genomes can be sequenced on this particular machine in the year 2012. If you ask this question in the year 2013, the answer is three genomes. However, 
if you ask this question in this year, with with the next next generation um, Illumina sequencing machines, the answer is 32 genomes that can be sequenced within a week. So not only are we seeing that the throughput of sequencing has uh, increased by one fold, the cost of sequencing has also reduced by almost um, tenfold, one order of magnitude. So this is the revolution that is ongoing now. And in fact, um, sequencing technology is a very fast-paced moving technology. Um, and, to, and what I've told you is um, the technology that is from one of the best company in the market, the Illumina sequencing technology, which allow us to sequence short wheat. Um, so this is a, another sequencing, sorry, this is another sequencing machine from the PEG Bio company. It allows long read sequencing. In contrast to the Illumina based uh, sequencing technology, which allow us to sequence about 100 base pair, this technology allows us to sequence kilo base pair. So it's 10 times or, um, or, or more. And in fact, if you look at these uh, machines, it's a huge machine, right? Um, so this is one of the cut uh, of, of the best technology out in the market today. Um, in but there are also other emerging technologies that allow us to sequence um, DNA. So this is uh, another version of the sequencing technology which is called the nanopore long read sequencer, and it really um, make use of nanotechnology in which, as you can see over here. Um, pores will be created on membranes and DNA will flow through the membranes and when the DNA flow through the membranes, the DNA will be read electronically. So this is really, really remarkable. Um, it is not market ready, but what I want to emphasize is that one of the reasons why I show you this slide is because if you look at this gentleman who is my colleague at the Genome Institute of Singapore, what he's holding in his hand is a sequencer. It's a sequencer which is based on the nanopore technology. On one hand, we see a humongous uh, machines that allow us to do long read sequencing. On the other hand, this, the technology is going into a, a, a completely different dimension in which you can actually have it as a handheld device. And how this device works is that you can actually plug the device to a USB port onto your laptop. So this is a um, one of the emerging technology that we are seeing today. Right, so what is the sequencing trend? Number one, sequencing is going electronic. Right, DNA is being read electronically, semiconductor technology is being used for DNA sequencing. And number two is that sequencing is going imaging. So um, this, this is a very nice um, publication that was uh, published a few months ago that talks about in situ sequencing, sequencing on site of the DNA. So obviously you can imagine from <coughs> one week of, of producing um, three genomes of data to today, the machine allows us to produce 30 genomes of data. We are going into another era. This is the era of big genomics data. One human genome will produce um, on an Illumina machine about 300 gigabyte of data, which is equivalent to um, a typical hard disk um, of a laptop. So you can imagine every week the machine will allow you to produce 30 genome worth of data, and, and that is uh, something that we have not experienced before. Um, and next gen sequencing will and has transformed biomedical research. It allow us to go into uh, different type of applications, for example, to discover important therapeutic target, perform different type of genetic tests, and be able to do uh, RNA or DNA-based diagnostic. So this is what uh, is so exciting about the work that we are doing. And obviously, um, based on the projection of um, some of this sequencing technology, the trend that they're going, we can think of a few scenarios. Scenario number one, a tsunami is coming, right? A tsunami um, of big data will be coming, and are we prepared for that? Number two is, um, we ride this wave of very exciting sequencing technology, um, 
and this is obviously something that we have to prepare for. And the third scenario is that instead of riding the wave or being swept over by the wave, we dive underneath the sea and look for other technologies. So this, um, this is what uh, our institute are, are preparing ourselves for, the, for, for this uh, exciting era of uh, next-gen sequencing. So is Singapore prepared for this genomics revolution? Right. Um, well, the, the answer is yes, because um, about uh, in the year 2000, the Singapore government decided to put in money to fund uh, biomedical research as part of that initiative, one of the program is a Singapore Genomics Program. And the Singapore Genomics Program that was formed in the year 2000 has evolved into an institute, the Genome Institute of Singapore, which, uh, which I am in. So the, the goal for the Genome Institute of Singapore is to conduct the best science possible to provide genomics capability for Singapore to train the next generation of young scientists to attract and retain the best global talents and finally to enhance economic developments in biomedical science.